So let's talk about the new Mark 8 Golf facelift. So more information has come out recently in June about this car. Um, you know, I've covered the Golf R particularly quite a lot on this channel, and now it looks like they're going to do a facelift, so a Mark 8.5 essentially. Let's talk about the changes from kind of some of these spy shots around Germany. The biggest thing a lot of people have been speaking about with me, and certainly my opinion, is getting to grips a little bit with the infotainment. As you can see a little bit there, it looks like there's quite a bit of redesign, which we'll go into. But yeah, for, first of all, on the outside, I don't actually think there was masses amount that needs to be done on the Mark 8 Golf. I don't think it was the worst looking car in the world. But it looks like they've kind of changed a little bit the front grille. There's a great example on this website, actually, if we go to a bigger image. Yeah, lots of, uh, lots of changes, as you can see. It's just here. So you can see this is the 2021 Mark 8 Golf. You can see the front end. Here's the Mark 8.5 facelift. So, you know, minor differences to the grille. Um, kind of mimicking a bit of the trend from, from other VW products like the Tiguan. That's what a lot of manufacturers will do. They'll, they'll kind of change it across the range. One thing that I know a lot about kind of like the infotainment is they'll use it across their fleet in Volkswagen. It's going to be one of the latest top of the range electric cars that VW do. Once that comes out, the latest infotainment, that will likely show in sort of, you know, the Mark 8, Mark 8.5 facelift golf. But let's go straight on and talk about that infotainment. So, I've shown this before actually, and it doesn't look like too much has changed from these kind of spy shots, but essentially the screen is a lot bigger. I don't necessarily think that was like a, a game changer. I don't think the size of the screen was particularly the problem. I think it was just more the usability, the functionality, and yeah, ease of use of certain things. But as you can see at the bottom, they haven't really changed any of the buttons, which changed like the climate control and the volume. So that has changed, that stayed the same. But certainly the actual sort of like stability of the system was, was part of the problem. So potential hardware upgrades sort of changed in there but obviously you know the big change they've sort of made it quite a bit of a statement to say you know we've changed this because it has been a talking point at the very least for a lot of people a lot of customers a lot of owners and it you know it does have some challenges let's just say this is obviously a test module you can see all the different cables that they've sort of tried into it they've got kill switch in there as well um yeah, so that's kind of what's changed. Obviously, we can't see what the actual functionality is like. I mean, a bigger screen is ultimately going to help if you've got big, imagine like big square buttons to do things. That's going to help, certainly if you do use it, whether it's stationary or potentially you need to change stuff on the move. Although, you know, I still have my gripes with certain um, facelifts. That can be a bit of a potential challenge but that's going to be the huge thing for certainly for people looking to go for the facelift because well certainly to drive i've driven the market golf far quite a lot i've driven the club sports and the gti's um you know it's a good car it's a good car it's a golf you know what more do you need um, i do like how this one has different matching <laughs> interiors it's really a mixed matching car to try and i guess confuse people trying to take pictures of it um the the rear doesn't look too much change i mean there's, there's minimal changes really and that is kind of to be expected, particularly on the Golf. I don't know where VW are going to go with the Golf in terms of as a platform. Is it going to work with their kind of electric range? You know, you know, Ford are going to eventually obviously get rid of the Focus. Um, will the Golf sort of be on its last legs potentially? Um, certainly this facelift gives a good chance for them to uh, revitalise the car. As To be honest, out of all the reviews and from my certain opinion, it's probably one of the only faults. Um, you know, certainly from a Mark 8 Golf R point of view, if that was sorted, I mean, I don't really know what more you'd want in a car, personally. Um, so that's definitely going to be the big change, which is well worth talking about. Styling-wise, the only thing you can really pick up on is a little bit different in the front grille, certainly on this model of car anyway. Whether or not they change more of the top of the range models in terms of like adding more power or doing any sort of little tweaks, I'm not so sure. But um, this was certainly something that they needed to do. And certainly saying that they get, well, it's, it's worth it in terms of VW's kind of thinking in terms of actually because they can use it across the range. It's not something unique to the Golf, it's something they can use in other models, which means it works for the electric, it works for all that kind of um, sort of side of things. It said it's going to grow from 10 to 10.4 inches just on this side. I mean, that looks bigger than, a lot bigger than the previous one. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a smaller screen inside the screen. Um, I don't know. But yeah, there's there's not too much else to say. Obviously, a different range of kind of like engines is going to go about it, and they're still sort of saying they're going to have the flagship Golf R with the with the um, EA Triple A. So we're just going to have to wait and see. But certainly, these are some of the spy shots that have come across. You know, I'm really interested to know what people think. You know, will it convince you? You know, I talk about the Golf R a lot on this website. This isn't a specific Golf R model, but in terms of the infotainment, that's essentially what's the big change is going to be. 
will it be easier to use um or you know is it uh you know i mean for me i think it's guaranteed to be easier to use i don't, I don't think there's there's going to be a question of that and i think it's going to work quite well across the range you know vw Alley group is a huge group they're going to use the same kind of certainly the same kind of software in the back end to be able to use across all their fleets in terms of like audi a3 skodas and everything um, but yeah, the Gulf kind of got a lot of um, a lot of uh, slack, I guess, from um, yeah a few challenges. Certainly, freezing early on wasn't wasn't ideal. It's positive changes at the end of the day. That's what facelifts are designed to do, a bit of nip and tuck. And this is what the results are going to be. But you know, let me know your thoughts in the comments. What you think about this, and would it convince you to really give it another chance if you're not so keen on the Gulf, or is it a little bit too little, too late, and you've moved on to another brand? Or do you think there were bigger problems potentially, not just the infotainment? And, or do you think the infotainment actually didn't need changing and everything was right in the first place and this is just not really enough changes in terms of a bit of a front grille and a giant iPad style screen? Um, really interested to know your thoughts in the comments. And yeah, subscribe, like and share for sort of more content to come.